Hi, I'm Jacques Pepin, and I'm cooking at home. Occasionally, I spurge with a big steak. I used to eat many more steaks than I do now, but I wanted to show you how professionally the right way to mark the steak. So, salt, pepper on both sides, of course. A dash of oil, again on both sides. And with this, I'm going to cook a, a zucchini as a garnish here. And I'll probably cut it in four like this, four pieces like this. Again, a little dish of salt on top of it, and a dash of oil as well. So, on your grill outside, particular, notice that the things are going this way. That's how you start. So we put it there this way. And that's going to cook there for a good minute. Minute. Uh, and in that classic way, we turn it all the time. I have that too. So about a minute. Depending, of course, on the size of your steak and depending how you like it, more done, less done too. But probably a minute now. So you turn it from that position here, you turn it this way, it has to come this way, exactly. So it's this way, you turn this way. Now after one minute, We'll turn it this way so that it fits this, and again the other way, four times, so that it's equally cooked on one side, the other side, marked beautifully on both sides, and the red of the steak is right in the center of it. Yeah. That's how classically we used to mark. Either that, or even a fish, a sole, or even a piece of chicken, it would be marked on each side this way properly. Now, this way, this way. The line here should be the same than this. And of course, frankly, I like to do that outside because my grill outside is really, really hot. Hotter than what it is in the kitchen here. You judge, of course, that by touching in a professional kitchen, a piece of raw meat is soft, very soft. As the heat gets it, it contracts, and the juice of the meat is pushed toward the center of the meat. And as it bounces back like this, it indicates that it's pretty rare in the center. But a well piece of meat is going to be hot without bouncing. So here it goes, remember, this way, this way, and now this way again. And as you see, I would have a perfect mark here, perfect mark on the other side too. Well, I would say that steak is a good inch, inch and a half, so for rare, probably a good minute and a half, two minutes per side. And yes, important, as I say, the outside contract and the juice is pushed out toward the center of the meat. If you do a standing rib roast, you put it into the oven, your recipe is, say, 45 minutes at 425 degrees, whatever. If you take it out and you cut right through it at that point, you will notice that maybe one inch from the outside is all gray, like totally overcooked. All the center is flabby, barely lukewarm. Because that juice has been pushed back in the center of the meat as it cooked. When it relaxes, when you take it out, it does to rest, that is. So that the meat decontract, the juice runs through the meat, and you can see it accumulates around, and then it will be pink from the beginning to the end. For a steak like that, it should rest at least five, six minutes on a rack of lime, and maybe 10 minutes on a standing rib roast like 30, 30, 35 minutes before you can cut into it. So it's very important. So that's basically it now. And you can see that that steak, the marking there, exactly like the marking here. That will rest a couple of minutes here, there. This are, if you like them a bit crunchy as I do, they'll be just about fine there. As you can see, the steak has been resting a couple of minutes now, and you can see all the red juice, the juice which comes out of it. 
So this is the time to serve it now. We have our garnish. I will certainly use that juice. And top of it, if you can, we have a tablespoon here of the anchovy butter. On top of it, we'll make it absolutely delicious. As you see, that piece of meat here will be rare. And I can cut it through it. You will see it will be just about the color that I like it. But as you can see, I cut it on purpose at the end of it. The color will be the same thing at the edge all the way through if it had a chance to rest for a little bit. And this is it. The classic grilled steak with anchovy butter and zucchini. Happy cooking!